Hello everyone, this is Congressman Keith Ellison and I want to give a special thank you, a very special thank you to every member of the Bakery, Confectionery, Tobacco Workers and Gray Millers International Union. You all are special to me because you're at the very forefront of the battle for the American working and middle class. There's no doubt about it, we're working together in this struggle to make sure that the American dream is available for everybody in the richest country in the history of the world Everybody who works full time should be able to make a livable wage and we shouldn't ever accept anything less. Special thanks too to the leadership. David Durkee, our president, is awesome. He's leading the way. He's fighting it out. Thank you very much, David. And also Steve Bertelli, International Secretary Treasurer, who you know takes no prisoners and is kicking indoors every single day. Thank you, Steve. Let me just say very briefly that much has been said about income inequality, and as it should be. President Obama very correctly said that this issue is the issue of our time. But what are the components of income inequality? There are unfair trade deals, so we're fighting against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We're trying to make sure that we, that trade deals should lift labor standards around the world, not accelerate the race to the bottom. We're also taxes, our tax structure, actually promotes inequality. We do not uh, tax uh, the wealthiest people in this country high enough because they don't earn paychecks. They got carried interest and they've been taxed at a lower rate. This is unfair, we should get rid of this. We should also get rid of deferral, which allows corporations to keep money overseas and not bring it back into this country. But also not only that, it is the attack on collective bargaining, which may be the most important weapon against the working class. This attack on collective bargaining, I want to tell you that I'm very concerned about what the Supreme Court is looking at right now. You know, this Harris versus Quinn case, I believe is an existential threat to us that we should stand against it. But I also want to say too, that we cannot just fight against bad things. We've actually got to institute some good things. And that's why I want to tell you about something. I'm about to introduce a bill that makes union organizing a civil right. Of course, we know under the National Labor Relations Act, if you fire somebody for trying to organize a union, that person can make a claim and if it's proven that they were fired for union organizing, they can get their job restored and they can get back wages minus anything they made in the interim period. But this remedy is slow. This remedy does not involve trouble damages. This remedy does not include discovery. A civil right, a civil right, based on the simple idea in the First Amendment, which is freedom of assembly and freedom of expression, are ideas that I think we can sit the right, the civil right to organize on. And if you discriminate, and I want, my law, my bill says that if you fire somebody who's trying to organize a union, they will be able to individually sue that employer. They will be able to get damages. They will be able to get uh, punitive damages they will be able to get discovery against employers who do this. And in many ways, for this civil right, it doesn't really matter or whether or not the workers ever approve the union or not. It's about the freedom to stand up and say, I'd like a union. It's a simple matter of freedom of expression. Now, why, when the majority of Americans, when asked, would you join a union if you could, they say yes. But yet, union density is, it, is in, in single digits. And everybody, Every, every one of you knows the reason why, that when you're trying to organize a, 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 a bit, a, an industry or a, or a company, uh, they fire one person and don't care what the outcome is and everybody else says, oh my goodness, I need this job, I better keep my mouth shut. That's how they do it. So the right to say, yeah, I think a union's a good thing, ought to be vindicated, ought to be fought for, and it can't be some slow, inadequate remedy as the National Labor Relations Act provides. I'm not saying we don't want that right, we do need that right, but that's a right to vindicate the group's right to come together and collectively bargain. What about the individual's right to express their want, desire for a union? That needs to be protected too. And if we protect that, I believe that we will be able to see workers will prevail and we'll see greater union density in the future, which I think is key to dealing with income inequality. At the end of the day, if the body politic of America and, the, and, the, and America's people uh, 
is, 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 is ever going to have some real spine in it. That spine is going to be made up of organized labor. That's the steel that holds up the body politic of the working class, organized labor. And so organized labor is, this is just going to lead us out of this. And of course, the, the bakery and confectionery workers are at the very forefront of that battle. So bless you for the wonderful work you're doing. We are partners in this thing together. And as co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, I want to let you know that we will not let you down. We are going to fight for your interests, for the working class, for the working people in the middle class of this country. So have a great conference. God bless. And watch out for this bill we're about to drop, making the right to organize a union a civil right.